I became a feminist, I think, um, as a consequence of the civil rights movement, which also dovetailed with the early years of the women's liberation movement in Britain. It was a bit later to come over here, but I had been part of people's democracy and civil rights. And then I went to Queen's and didn't stay active in politics because the trouble started and, you know, it was difficult to know where you fitted in in a very polarised, very difficult situation. But I became more and more interested in feminism and meeting other women who were interested. And so we set up the uh, Women's Liberation Society in Queen's in um, 1973, 1974. Um, and that evolved then. Um, we then wanted to be outside of Queen's and became more and more specific about the kind of feminists that we were. And we were very much influenced by socialist feminism and women like Sheila Robotham, for me personally, as somebody interested in women and, and history. So in 1975, myself and a few others set up the Socialist Women's Group, uh, which was a very serious body. We developed a manifesto and we had meetings mainly with left-wing groups to find out what programmes they had for women or what their analysis was of women's oppression. Um, and then it evolved from there um, isolating what were key issues, trying to um, trying to bring feminism and women's issues into all sorts of different arenas that had never thought about them. And that brought up a whole lot of questions about our views on imperialism, on the British presence in Ireland, which, as you can imagine, was difficult for quite a few people. Um, some felt we were far too insular as a group and too focused on that and we wanted to be wider, we wanted to attract more women. So finally there was a kind of split within the Socialist Women's Group that some women went on to form Women Against Imperialism and they worked very closely with the Armagh Women's Prisoner Solidarity Campaign uh, with local women in um, communities in West Belfast. And we formed the Belfast Women's Collective, which then is much more um, focused on key issues like reproductive rights, um, violence against women, childcare, a whole host of issues that really depended on what women wanted to take up. Thank you. Um, that's really interesting what you were talking about there. I think those kind of tensions that you were talking about that, that um, happened in the Socialist Women's Group and led to a kind of split, do you think they're, they're still present in the modern feminist movement here or do you think the, the ending of the Troubles has largely resolved that? I think things have have moved considerably. When when we were talking about um, the British presence and imperialism, I think we, one of the things that we we weren't focused on, I think, were the totality of women's experiences here and women in unionist communities. Um, they were very much kind of isolated, I would say, from the women's movement, or that we were isolated from them. But there were very few points of reference and I think partly because uh, feminism was seen as kind of not synonymous with republicanism but it was seen as something that was going against the status quo and that did make unionist women wary of forming alliances and um, I became uh, the project officer for Belfast City Council later on in the um, mid-1980s and it was through that that I started meeting women from different communities and seeing at that stage through things like the Women's Education Project which is the forerunner of WRDA um, the kind of work that was being done in different communities that wouldn't be called feminism but it was certainly raising the consciousness of women and working with them on different education projects, for example. Um, and so suddenly finding the commonality of experiences for women, working class women in different communities started, I think, building a different layer of understanding of feminism. And I think 
I think took some of the polarisation out of it when people started to see what they had in common.